I greet you in the name of the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is again that God has blessed us to be alive and to celebrate his goodness. It's a different kind of service, but everybody that got a praise, let's toot our horn for the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for this assembly called Faith. We're going to get right underway with a... Uh, scripture. Scripture will be given by Deacon Jimmy Moore, followed by a uh, prayer by uh, Sister Carrie Spivey, at which time we will have uh, two uh, worship songs. It will be led by our worship leaders, after which the sermon will be given by yours truly. Another song, an invitation, and the benediction in that order. I'm going to ask now that Deacon Jimmy Moore would come for the reading of today's scripture. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So good to see all my brothers and sisters back here at Faith for one more time. God is still good to us, but we still got a ways to go. Amen? Amen. The scripture we come from the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Yes, 20, 20. Yeah, chapter 20. Verses 10 through 15. Revelation chapter 20, verses 10 through 15. And at the top of that says, Satan punished forever. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and bronze stone, where the beasts and the fa uh, false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him excuse me, that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book were opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead, the death, excuse me, let me start again on that verse. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead uh, which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And the dead and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever were not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. May the Lord have a blessing this great word. gracious for us to be here this morning. God has truly blessed us. The first thing I want to say, even before, I just want to just thank God for this wonderful opportunity for us to be back here on this sacred ground. I'm going to call it sacred ground if I will. If I could do that, Pastor, a sacred ground. Back to this house of worship. Good gracious. But I hope we've been worshiping God at home. All the talk I've been hearing about us coming in here, Pastor, I know I'm supposed to be doing the prayer, but just give me a moment. Give me a moment. We've been talking about praising God. Let us just praise God at home so we can get here and feel the way I feel right now. Oh, good gracious, I'm so grateful. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, I give you honor and I give you praise on this morning. Oh, God, I just thank you right now for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, oh, Lord God. Some of us have lost loved ones, oh Lord God. But we know that sometimes it's not all because of this virus, oh Lord God. It's come from loneliness, oh Father God. But help us to know that as long as you're with us, and like you said, you are, your word said that you're with us, always, never leaving us nor forsaking us. So we know, Lord, that you're with us. So we thank you right now for this wonderful opportunity to be here, oh Lord God, not because we've done anything so great or spectacular, but because you are God all by yourself, just for the love that you have for us. 
So this morning, oh Lord God, just be with us as we come, oh Father God. Put your arms all around our past, oh Lord God. Hold him up on every side, oh Lord God. Fix it, oh Lord God, and so he can give us a word that we need to hear on this morning, oh Father God. We thank you for your love and your kindness, dear Lord. Just for just keeping us when we're not keepable and loving us when we're not lovable. Oh, you're so wonderful, God. I just thank you right now just for being God all by yourself. Oh, Lord, touch our pastor now as he come forth. Oh, Lord God, to give us a word, a word from you, oh, Lord God. We thank you for this day, for yes. all that you've done. Yes. And we praise your holy and your yes. precious yes. name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm praying this morning for all of us. Yes. Amen and amen. Amen. Tragedies are common things, all kind of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, people can't get enough pain. But as for me, all I can say is, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Folks without homes, living out in the streets, and they just can't beat. Muggers and robbers, no place seem to be safe, but you've been my protection every step of the way, and I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me, yeah.
Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Savior Jesus the Christ in a different kind of circumstance, but God is still good. Amen. A lot of things happening in the world today, but God is still good. Amen. We wanted to express our love for the Lord. That's why we're here. We're not here for any form or fashion, but we hope you have been tuning in to the Facebook live streaming messages and the YouTube messages and but it was uh, said upon me that, what about a parking lot service? And I said, you know, if someone wants to do it, I'm willing to do it. Uh, we want to be as safe as we can. We're, we're admonishing you if you get out your vehicles to remember your mask. But we want you to praise the Lord. That's why we're here. Amen. We're here to worship God. And uh, though you're in your cars, I want you to sanctify your space, wherever your space is right now. If it's in your car, I want you to sanctify it so that God will show up and show himself strong. Amen. 
God is a good God, y'all. He is worthy to be praised. He's worthy for us to be here, to, to be out in, in, in this, this heat, this humidity, but God is good. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I, I'm not in the pool pit, but I'm not sitting down either. I can move around a little bit. And I feel good that I have my strength, I have my being, and I'm able to move in Christ. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. There's a lot going on in our world, in our society. But if you would turn to the book of Job, the scripture has been read. And this is our verse of focus. From the book of Revelation, you need to know that we're living in the last and the evil days. Uh, the days in which mother is against daughter and daughter against mother, son against father and father against son. The days in which those who you would expect to protect you can turn on you and they become more evil than the rudiment of society. But we serve a God that sees all and knows all. From the book of Job, chapter 16, those of you who have your weapons, book of Job, chapter 16, we're going to read just one verse. Those of you who have the King James rendering, ain't nothing changed, boo boo. We still going to read from the word. Amen. From the word of God, if you have the King James rendering from the book of Job, chapter 16, at verse 19. When you have that, say amen. amen. You will find words along this sort. Also, now behold, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. I'm going to stop right there. I just want you to pray with me on a topic my witness is in heaven. We're going to talk about the faithful witness. The faithful witness. If you would pray with me, eternal God, our Father, it's preaching time. A time in which, Father, we are attentive, we're here, and we're ready to hear from you. Now, God, speak through these lips of clay. Teach them exactly what you would have them to say, Father. You know who is here today. Bless us in the name of Jesus with a, uh, a, a Shekinah word, Father, right now that suits our case and fits our purpose. In the name of Jesus, we pray, trust, and believe. Say with me, amen. amen. I want to talk about a witness, a witness. We live in uh, a society and a nation in which a man by the name of Dylan Roof said, through an entire Bible study, looking and acting sincere. And after an hour or so, I'm told that he got up, pulled out a gun, and killed nine parishioners. I'm told that because he was hungry, when he was arrested, they allowed him to stop at Burger King. Yet and still, another man by the name of George Floyd was accused now, get this, accused of passing off a counterfeit $20 bill. Not only was he arrested, handcuffed, thrown down in the street, sentenced and murdered. And we call our nation a united nation, the United States of America. These are any time, anything but united times. While at the same time you have people who can walk down the middle of a street in Michigan armed with AK-47s and be loaded, mind you, and at the same time peaceful protesters are beaten, shoved, and pushed, and tear gassed. The very people that you expect and hire called public servants to protect you are the very ones now that are turning on us and killing us in the middle of the streets. But the Bible says here, and I'm reminded as Job, Job says, also behold, my witness is in heaven. Can I say right here that there's a piece of technology that I call another witness. When altercations and situations arise now and people are doing things that would go unnoticed and even go unpunished. People fight, they rob, they would normally get away with murder, but now people will reach into their pockets. 
pull out this technology and they will go to famine. And that which would not be known now is known to the whole world. That which would be hidden in obscurity never to come to the forefront of justice. Now the whole world watches. The little piece of technology called the cell phone has brought some fair play and some justice to society. The things that would normally be hidden from the eye of justice, now the whole world can watch while people are murdered. No longer now is it he said, she said. But I can look and see for myself and if I want to look at it over and over again and see the injustices of the world, but I came to tell you that there's another witness. There's a witness that we can't see, but I know that he's watching. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. I don't care where you go, I don't care what you do, how dark it is, there is somebody watching. There is somebody recording every action. The word says that every word that comes out of our mouth shall be recorded. I'm so glad that I don't need a cell phone. For Job says, my witness is in heaven. Certainly the eyes of God watches. He knows all and he sees all. Goes on further to say in the book of Revelation that was read in your hearing in chapter 20, verse 12, and John said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. I'm so glad that people might do me wrong and want to call wrong right and right wrong, but there is a witness that is recording every infraction that goes on. Somebody said that Jesus is going to straighten us all out when he comes. I'm so glad that we might skip man's justice down here, but can I let you go on record to know you will never skip God's justice. For God sees all and he knows all. You know, it's been said that, that riots are the voice of the unheard. Can I say right here that a riot is the voice of the unsaved? Because the saved know that there's a God who sees all and knows all. God is our vindicator. It might be wrong down here, but one day God is going to make it right. We all got to stand before the judgment seat. <laughs> and give an account for everything that is done in the body, good and bad. I'm so glad that when they took Jesus in the darkness of the night, there weren't any cell phones to record. No tapes was running, but somebody was looking. They saw him when they came to the Garden of Gethsemane and took him by force. Somebody said in the word that Peter reached and got his knife. You know, Peter was a token kind of Christian and cut off his ear. And Jesus said, if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. Can I say right here, put your sword down. Pick your vote up. I want to say it again. Put your sword down and pick your vote up. Stop throwing things through windows and take your rear end and vote for somebody who's going to do you right and going to call right, right, and wrong, wrong, and ace, a ace, and a spade, a spade. You upset, your anger is few. Without the few, you to fill out that census. There is a, an intelligent way to protest. Lord have mercy. They wasn't there. No cameras were rolling and nobody had a cell phone when they came and took Jesus and took him from kangaroo court to kangaroo court. There was no cameras rolling and nobody to record how they beat Jesus a whole lot worse than Rodney King. Nobody there to tell the story. But the Bible says that there's a true witness in heaven that sees all and knows all. Nobody was there and no cameras were rolling. There was no cell phone when they put that crown of thorns in his head. There was no cameras rolling when they pierced him in his side. There was no cameras rolling and no cell phone to take the picture as he bled on a bloody rugged cross. But I'm so glad that we know the story why I'm so glad you asked. Because there's a true witness 
in glory. His name is Jesus. He sees all and he witnesses all. I want to say right here at Faith Missionary Church, stay encouraged. God is our vindicator. Don't take matters to do your own hands. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Know that God is God and will always be God. No one can take that from him. I'm so glad he said, he didn't say a mumbling word until he said, no one takes my life lest I lay it down. Be encouraged to know that though they do wrong here, and though they call right wrong and wrong right, be like Job. Know that your witness is a true witness. Sees all and knows all. And even though they did Jesus wrong and there was no one to, to record the story, there was a witness that recorded everything. And he said, and we say for surety, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And those who thought he was wrong, just like the NBA commissioner, they're going to come back and say, you know, we got it wrong. A lot of people are getting it wrong right now. But don't be numbered in the midst of them. Let all of us get it right. Somebody say, get it right. Get it right. You're going to get it right when you know that we have a witness, a true witness, that writes it down and records it all in the book of heaven. We got to give an account of everything done in the body, good, bad, and indifferent. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Let all of us lift up holy hands to a God that is able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. Be encouraged, Faith Missionary Church. This is a temporary situation. Don't make a permanent decision on a temporary situation. This too shall pass. We're going to ask that the praise worshipers to come back around and give us a, a, a song of praise. And we're going to ask that you, whatever the song that they pick, that you would praise God with them. And let us praise God together. Let us make some noise out here in the open in Franklin County so they'll know something's going on over there in Faith Missionary Church.
say hallelujah. Just want to praise you forever and ever. How many know God deserves all the praise? God deserves all the honor. We thank God for your pressing. We believe that there's going to be a blessing in your pressing. To come out and, and to worship God in a new fashion. But I'm so glad that the church is not a building. The church is on the inside of us. Wherever I am, that's where the church is. Amen, amen. And, and we thank God for the, the, the beautiful hot sunshine. Being able to experience it on our bodies. And we thank God for you, you, and you. And we're going to get ready and close. We want you to know that if you did bring your tithes and offering, you can bring them. But please uh, remember the social distancing and placing them in the box. And can I say right here? that it is just as dangerous as it ever was. Don't think, don't let time, the, the, the longevity of this illness make us relax and think that we're safe. Until they get a cure, somebody say a cure. Until God sends a cure, a vaccine or something, it is going to be dangerous. The good news is found in Hebrews, the Lord said, not forsaking, forsaking the assembling of ourselves as some do. That lets us know that God intended for us to congregate. He wants us to congregate because it is strength, not only in numbers, but it is strength when the believers come together, encourage one another. We can see your smiling faces. Uh, there's going to be a time when God will reestablish the fellowship, but it is not yet. Amen. I told you before, Noah when he rested, when that water receded and rested uh, on the top of that mountain, he didn't jump ship. I'm telling you, don't jump ship. Continue your social distancing. Amen. Go out when you have to. Somebody say when you have to. When you have to. When you have to is a necessity, all right? It's different than when you want to. I'm tired. I'm just going to go out and, and go to the beaches and co-mingle. That's, that's on your volition. That's right. God is not going to protect stupidity. Can I say that again? God is not going to protect stupidity. Amen. He said he will bless us according to our need, not our greed. Amen. And we can be greedy, wanting more than God is giving us. Right now, he's giving us necessity, all right? You got to work, we understand that. You got to get groceries, we understand that. You got to get medicine, we understand that. But there is a time and a place for everything under the sun. Right now, it's a quarantine season. Somebody say a quarantine season. And as long as you do your part, which is called the possible, God will do his part. Amen? Amen. And when they want to, to, to force us to, to do something before it's time, we need to do just, just like uh, Noah. Remember, he sent out the raven first. Then he sent out the dove. Then he waited even longer and sent the dove out again. And notice when the dove came back with the branch, the olive leaf in his mouth, he didn't jump ship. He stayed right there until he heard God speak. Until God speaks, these doors going to be closed, all right? Until God says so. And when God says, open up these doors, we're going to come back, all right? But until then, it will, we don't know if there's going to be any more services like this, uh, but we want you to, to stay tuned. Continue as uh, I'm going to call her Minister Spivey said, to worship God in your home. Amen. Worship leaders, continue to get your songs together. <laughs> praise, praise leaders and music musicians, continue to practice your music. Ushers, continue to hone your craft, to get stronger. Whatever your gift is, exercise it to the best of your ability, realizing that God is going to bring all this to an end and to a, a conclusion. We don't know when, we don't know where, but we know that God will speak. And when he speaks, let us all be ready to answer. Amen? Amen. We're going to ask now, if you would, to turn on your lights. Turn on your lights. We're not going to stay on long. We're not going to run the batteries now. But turn on your lights. We cannot touch and agree, but we can let our light shine. When we turn on our lights... This is just symbolic of the light that shines in our hearts. And we want you to turn them on, and we're going to go to God in prayer. 
Let every heart pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you, God, for the ones who participated. Father, from the youngest to the oldest, for the ones who sung, for the ones who clapped. Father, for the one who lifted up holy hands, we thank you for them. And now, God, we exalt your name on high. We say that you're worthy to be praised, Father, in every circumstance and every situation. And we say thank you, God, for being our witness. Father, no matter whatever goes on here in the flesh, we know, God, that we have a witness that uh, is recording everything. And we will have to give an account for the good deeds and the bad. Father, bless us now. Thank you for the precious shed blood of Jesus the Christ. Father, no one has been abused. No one has been misused and mistreated and, and lied on and abandoned like our Savior. Thank you, Father, for taking all of that upon yourself and the person of Jesus Christ upon the cross. We thank you for redemption story. And we ask right now, Father, everyone on the sound of my voice, that you would bless, strengthen, and enable. Father, and we ask that you would reestablish the fellowship when you say so. Until then, God, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, wherever we are and whatever we're found doing. In the name of Jesus, now holy hands are raised. Now unto him that is able to do abundantly, exceedingly above that we can ask or think, according to the power that is working in us, be glory, majesty, dominion, henceforth, now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord acknowledge him by saying amen. amen. Say amen again. Make some noise for Jesus. Yeah.